Alright guys, we are still with the same Prado line and there's uh, six wildebeest that are walking straight towards this prize. I mean they fed yesterday but there must be someone that's hungry around here. So we're gonna just not move our vehicle and just see how it plays out. Maybe they just walk straight past. Or maybe there will be only five left. Welcome to Serengeti Show Live guys, another day out here on, and today we, for the first time we're going to explore the plains. It's um, a lot of rain again overnight, but we believe the plains are spectacular. If you look at the Serengeti plains, you think that there is nothing. But once you go out on a drive out there, you bump into so, so much. Uh, just again guys. I'm driving off-road, we have our permissions and papers in order, we're working with Tanapa and the Tourist Board of Tanzania, so uh, no alarms, we are in between Nduti and Nabi at the moment, and yeah, let's go see what we can find. Okay guys, this is the Serengeti Plains view, we bumped into a huge part of line, and uh, come have a look, I'll bring you a bit closer. They look very relaxed and uh, I can already see the dominant males with the pride so you, it's very nice to see the male with his patients with the sub adults and uh, it's not often that you see the big boy together with all the females so oh, nice yawn I'll just give them a second to relax again None of them got up as yet, and at least it seems that they're fairly relaxed. So we're probably about 10, 15 meters away. So, wow. So you have at least five, possibly six adult females. And you've got this one male, and then su sub adults, maybe another four five sub-adults, so that could be one or two litters. I would say it's probably the survivors of two, lit two litters, big sneeze, lots of flies about because migration is around the corner. But, wow, the Serengeti is lion heaven. Lionesses when we go past. Powerful. I'm going to give you a 12 past the mile.
the Serengeti is unbelievable for you. So uh, must be the line, the most prolific park with nice open plains and clear sightings. Serengeti must be top destination for. You just seem so much further than you do in the proper Myomba woodland or southern African vegetation. So it's just so much more that you see every day. Well, let's continue. Okay guys, migration update time, and for those of you that don't know, there are more than just wildebeest that take the journey north. Uh, we've bumped into huge herds of zebra, and the other two species were actually Irland, they also take the journey north, and then Thompson's gazelle, so it's those four. Huge numbers of zebra, very close to Nabi Hill, and uh, we're right on the kind of road that heads up to Nabi that separates um, NCA from Serengeti so it's kind of the Nabi access road from Mundutu. Huge numbers, I mean we're talking thousands and thousands of zebra, it's not often that you see them so densely packed in together so wonderful to see. This must be about five or ten thousand all the way stretching almost from Hidden Valley all the way to Nabi, so... Beautiful migratory virtual zebra and fascinating that they all have a unique pattern. Absolutely stunning, you know. Wonder how they always seem to get away from lion. They certainly have sensory wise very good hearing and they safety by numbers and then of course we believe that they use a little bit of the wildebeest to for protection so they are as long as you hang out with something that's easier for the predator to predator to get to then you have a far better chance of surviving no but on a serious note there's a definitely a symbiotic relationship between wildebeest and zebra the opposite is also true that because the zebra have better hearing and they generally pay a bit, a bit more attention to predators approaching, they warn wildebeest again, so it definitely helps them. Then there's a grazing uh, relationship. Zebra have really good digestive systems, so they don't mind eating the tall grass, long grass, so generally the zebra would graze first and then that generates or sparks growth again and then wildebeest will follow and they can get to the short new grass and that's what they are after uh, out here on the Serengeti Plains. Stunning! You never see a skinny zebra. That just shows you how good they digest their diet and um, definitely very sufficient enzymes move, moving through the stomach line and uh, very effective digestive system so stunning resting with their heads on, a, on one another you know that's partly bonding social interaction but also a little bit of observation to both directions. You will also see that behavior in cheetah 
where one would feed, the other one will keep a lookout, and so they change. And also, if they do, are oh, both of them up, then they will always look in opposite directions for potential danger. Hello everyone, welcome back to Camp Life and today we are going to cook ugali with beef roast together with cabbage mixed up with fresh carrots and onions. And here are the ingredients that we are supposed to have so that we can prepare our meal. Firstly, we have maize flour, beef, cabbage, red onions, fresh garlic, fresh ginger, carrots, fresh tomato, fresh green paper, vegetable oil, and all of our spices. And this is how we are going to prepare our beef roast. Firstly, you have to chop the meat. After you chop it, you have to crack your fresh garlic, mix it together, and then put it in the pot, then put some water, and then take it to the kitchen, ready to be cooked. Meanwhile, while you're waiting for it to be well cooked, you have to boil your water, then after you boil it, then you can put hot water in the pot and you can take your maize flour and you can start stirring. When it's becoming stiff, you can wait just for five minutes, then your girl will be cooked. Thank you. Now we have just finished the cooking and let's see what we have prepared. Here is our ugali, our cabbage and this is our beef frost. I hope everybody will enjoy. You are welcome. Karibu sana. Guys, the lunch is ready. Karibu sana means welcome. Mlomwema means enjoy your meal. Okay, guys, out here on the plains, anything is possible, and uh, we're sneaking up onto male ostrich. You will see it's black. And the females are more dull, grey coloured. And out here on the plains in the really dry season, I've seen lion even hunting ostrich. That's how tough it gets here. We are now in the wet season and there's an abundance of everything. And uh, I'm going to try and approach him and see how close I can get just to show you a little bit closer up. My approach is parallel, again not directly, I'm trying for him to calm down. He's very wary of us, but let's see. I mean everyone's seen ostrich, but 
Let me they stay really pretty. So the males will sit on the eggs and warm them up at night. So very good camouflage for incubating those eggs at night and then the females will sit on them during daytime and they are far better camouflaged for daytime. So it's teamwork. They run really fast so there's no way we can keep up. I don't want to disturb him too much. Okay guys, we on our way back to camp. We're going to stop off at the lions and see if they are hungry. And then on our way to camp we will go look for that leopard that we've been missing but all thumbs guys Spotted hyena. Uh, you can see these females are far larger than the males. And, uh, it's one of those species where the females are in control, which is uh, Yeah, yes. Okay guys, it looks like she's managed to find the rest of the clan and you can see now why these guys are so prolific here on the plains. The moment that it gets dark, quite inquisitive. These ones, there must be a lot of, this is their home, so they're not used to being bothered. And uh, this is where they feel comfortable and safe. And this is where the little ones will get born and they also have babysitters, some females look after other females pups and a very very strong bond and social network and cohesion that they have especially at their den itself so they go and disappearing into the holes so they're making use of old artfark holes and uh, it comes home Okay, it looks like that was a perfect example of uh, this female that's very pregnant just passing through. It looks like she didn't even stop really. No conflict at all there and she's just passing on. All the zebra in the background are paying attention but not too worried about her. And uh, let's go and find those lions. Hi youngsters out there, welcome back to the Kids Corner at Serengeti Show and today we're going to learn a little bit about tracks and signs. So if we have a look and if you drive around in the bush, if you look around you can always see what passed there before you arrived. And over here I want you all to guess what do you think this was. That's very big, if you look at it it's probably about 
30 centimeters wide. You can even see a few front nails there. Yes, that's right. Elephant do have toes. He didn't know that. So here we could see was a very big elephant that had a big bath here in the mud. So if you have a look around and you wonder who made this mess, we'll have a closer look. This is a big clue. It looks like something big. So let's have a look further. So here you can see another one. This looks like a hind foot track. And here you can see an elephant had a lovely bath. It must be nice and clean now. And then, just to make really sure, if we go a little bit further, we find the elephant dung. So now we are 100% sure that this was an elephant that made such a mess here. Probably enjoyed a lovely bath just after the rain. And now the dung beetles are here, and they come and grab the du elephant dung and they make new balls. And uh, we covered the dung beetles in another Kids' Corner episode. So there you go guys, now you know, it's always good to have a look around and then you know what walked uh, somewhere just before we arrived. We'll see you later. Oh there they are guys, so they haven't moved much. We've we passed the zebra kill that they probably ate last night, so that's why they're so lethargic and but it's a big pride many mouths to feed so oops let me not just bump over this one young male you can see the mane is coming but, uh, let's get them all together nice and cool here in the green grass so that's why they prefer this Turning light on them now. Late afternoon. And we're gonna just stay with them for a little while and see if they're gonna start moving. We saw a few stretches and yawns already. Uh, but I guess the adults would have had most of that zebra, so the youngsters will get hungry before the adults, but you'll see. Much better light on them than our first visit. So we'll just let them relax a bit, although I don't think this male can relax anymore. I just really like the female, the one, strong females here. So all the youngsters, the ones that are hungry have their heads up and they are already interested, you'll see some of the sub-adults are not getting enough food at the moment because there's no incentive for the for the male and the females to hunt as frequent, frequently but uh, and they can't go hunt on their own as yet so they're dependent on when the females get hungry and they'll get their next meal so at the moment there's just not enough for all of them and, uh, it looks like there are quite a few male sub-adults, so they will get pushed out anyway, and the sibling females will probably remain with their mothers in the pride, but the, the males will get pushed out, so... Okay guys, we are still with the same Prado line and there's uh, six wildebeest that are walking straight towards this prize. I mean they fed yesterday but there must be someone that's hungry around here. So we're gonna just not move our vehicle and just see how it plays out. Maybe they just walk straight past or maybe there will be only five left. Let's see, they still haven't seen the lions. The lions haven't noticed them either. We're keeping very still to not disturb anything. And uh, you never know. 
And we're going to keep our equipment still, not to draw any attention to ourselves. And let's see, up to now, there's been no change in behavior. I might, might smell us because the wind is coming from yeah, the front one has stopped. Notice the vehicle. Let's see. Let's see. They are downwind, so it helps for any noise that they would be making. And the lions won't smell them. So now they've noticed each other and there's some interest. But uh, definitely enough lines here to pick and choose so uh, in range but missed their chance but you know so much for them to eat right now that uh, they don't have to grab every opportunity. Okay guys as the sun is setting these uh, guys are, some of the sub adults are going back to the kill carcass. There's not much left, but it seems that they're all heading that way. So we're going to follow these three beautiful lionesses. They are just so powerful. So have a look. They're very relaxed. So. that I've obviously had the fair share of the kill so they don't feel any need to go and feed more as yet but it is time for them to wake up and they, they won't let the one adult female has already followed the cubs and uh, these are the sisters that obviously let's see if they will follow Big hole here somewhere. Okay, it's right there. Everything about these lines are built for power. Very stiff spine. And, uh, not a lot of flexibility, but that's to carry the weight and the muscle. And those eyes are just so intimidating, especially the one closest to us. It's keeping you very close. Moving from the tail, so she just we just moved slightly into her comfort space, but she's okay. Very relaxed. Okay, guys, we just want to show you what they've been feeding on a zebra, and uh, without driving into too many holes, I just want to we just want to come a bit closer. But this pride would finish them finish a zebra in one sitting so I think they killed it either early this morning or last night but uh, so you can see now the sub adults are feeding on the leftovers because the adults have definitely had, had the lion share one adult female she's obviously the mum of the sub adults so she came here to babysit not going to get too close to them, but you see, you don't want to disturb their behavior and let the little guys have something to eat, you know, whatever is left there. And here's the adult closest to us, and she's looking after the youngsters. You can even see that the sub adult males have had more to eat than the females, you know, so you can see the little mane already developing here. The youngster here in front, Let's see some of this interaction. Let me just switch off.
very very quickly lost his confidence you can see the big pause on that sub adult male he still has to grow into it mum with her head up and, uh, beautiful Looks like she's already planning the next meal for the for the youngsters. This is where they learn manners and discipline and how to listen. And she feels that she needs to protect the sabarals and she wants to move it away a little bit so it also Okay guys, that's it for us for today, sun's setting and uh, we're going to head back to camp, tomorrow's another day. Let's give you one last look. See how inquisitive this little youngster is, he now has a full stomach, so full of confidence. Unbelievable day. That's just overwhelming. It's a sensory overload. I drive here many days and every day I get back to camp and it's just draining, emotionally draining and you have to just come and experience it. It's out of this world.